What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, just finished watching NXT Stand and Deliver Night 2, and I must say, I definitely enjoyed this night um, better than Night 1. Uh, the main reason is because a lot of the wrestlers that were wrestling on this night, I was familiar with. I've, you know, seen them wrestle more than the previous wrestlers from the previous night, so I'm kind of familiar with who they are, you know, their characters, and, you know, kind of how they move about in the ring so i was you know more invested and let's be honest here the carrying cross finn balor match and the unsanctioned match between adam cole and kyle o'reilly i don't think anything on night one was going to beat those two matches alone so we're gonna go down through uh through you know, my notes i kind of sat down and tried to take notes as best as possible once again uh, we're gonna go through the match order and uh let's start it off with the unification ladder match this was the opening match and i did enjoy this opening match uh a, um a lot better than the previous old uh uh opening uh match from night one santos escobar versus jordan devlin I'm more familiar with Jordan Devlin from the UK, so I kind of knew who he was. It's crazy because both of these guys are technically heels, but Escobar was really getting uh, like a lot of face reactions tonight, even though he pulled some heel tactics. So both of them are heels, but it was just one of those situations where two heels are holding uh, a championship and they're unifying it. So... At the beginning, there was some nice mat wrestling. I was loving the exchange there. Uh, I love the people. I love the people being allowed to be at ringside. Like more people being allowed at ringside, it's always a nice little touch. On the regular NXT shows, it's not as many people, but now you know for these takeover shows, it was at least more people there. It uh, gives you that organic feel. It's better than just having the the crowd chants piped in, you know what I'm saying? So I, I like that uh, aspect of, of both nights. Um, Devlin hitting the moonsault on Santos. Uh, that was nice. That that was nice. The ring was, uh, the ladder was propped up on the corner, and he hits a beautiful moonsault on Santos. Like, the form, execution, everything looked pretty brutal. The impact alone looked pretty brutal. Um, no, actually, that's later on in the match. That's actually later on. He actually hits a moonsault. I want to say he hits a moonsault from the, the apron while Santos is outside. And he hits it, but his head hits like the announce table from the impact from the fall. So that that was the first moonsault uh, by Devlin at this point in the match. Then uh, Santos launches De uh, Devlin into a ladder. That was a, you know, and he falls out the ring because of the ladder and stuff like that. Nice little, nice little spot. Uh, Santos definitely uh, was a crowd favorite. Obviously, a lot of people was chanting Santos' name. And anytime Devlin got some offense, they were booing the hell out of him. Um, Santo drops kick the ladder into Devlin, and the ladder falls on Devlin's knees. That looked kind of painful. The drop kick alone when the ladder hits him, you know what I'm saying, it, it looked painful. But then when the ladder fell on his knees from the rebound, oh, he was limping from that. So I was like, nice little double combo, you know what I'm saying, on uh, Devlin at this point. Then a nice DDT from Devlin from the middle of the, of the ladder to Santos. They were up on the ladder, and Devlin hit a nice little DDT. Santos dives through the ropes to Devlin into the ladder. Devlin's on the outside, propped up against the ladder, against the barricade. Santos throws caution to the winds, dives through the ropes, and uh, causes, uh, you know, some carnage on the outside. Um, let's see. Devlin clips. Uh, uh, what Did I say clips? I meant to say hits Santos on the edge of the ladder. That's what it is. No. So, actually, he did clip it. De basically, Devlin... Flips over, fireman like suplex uh, Santos uh, on the edge of the ladder. So his back hits the edge of the ladder. Painful spot. Those spots always made me cringe in ladder matches when someone gets suplexed or flipped onto the ladder and the, their back, their smaller back hits the edge or the back of their neck or something. It just always makes me cringe. Um, then this is the moonsault. Devin hits a beautiful moonsault to Santos from the top of the ladder, and the impact was brutal. He's literally at the tippy top of this ladder that's kind of shaky, hits it in the corner all the way down. Nice little angle. like a There's like a little camera angle up above, little eagle cam angle. Beautiful. And when he hits it, the impact is brutal. 
you they're both rising in pain. Like is it, to me, those type of moves really, in my opinion, hurt both the wrestlers. But it's still a beautiful move to see when pulled off effectively. Then at this point, I'm confused because I didn't know he was part of uh um uh, what's the group that was uh. They was in the uh, tag team match uh, last night. Elgato Del Fantasma. I didn't know he was linked up with them. So they come out as Devlin is climbing the top of the ladder. He's about to, you know, retrieve the titles. They come out, push him off the ladder, start beating the hell out of him. The crowd starts booing, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like he was a heel anyway. So, it, it like... It really didn't matter. They both was heels. So I, I thought that was kind of crazy. Um, then Devlin, um, you know, he's, he tries to make or, you know, make some com uh, some comeback offense. Devlin hits a Spanish fly from for, uh, I want to say, from the like near top of the ladder. It's like mid rings, top of the ladder. It's still still high up. Hits a beautiful Spanish fly to Santos. Then Santos, like at this point, um, towards the end of the match, Santos, Devlin, they're fighting, you know, at the typical spot. Two people fighting on uh, on the ladder, trying to get the the titles. Uh, this at this point, Elgato del Fanta uh, Fantasma. They already leave now. In my head, I'm thinking I would have just had them out there. It's no disqualification. Might as well. But he told them to leave anyway. Like he got it. I'm like, all right, cool. So they're fighting on top of the ladder and. It's funny, it's kind of poetic because Devlin is known for hitting people with massive headbutts as well. So, um, Santos hits Devlin with a headbutt off the ladder. Devlin falls off the ladder and there's a ladder propped up in another corner. And he falls through that ladder, splitting it in half. And um, ultimately, Santos reaches, climbs up the rest of the ladder, gets the titles, and he's the unified uh, cruiserweight champion, man, the NXT cruiserweight champion, so uh, I thought that was, you know, it was it was an enjoyable opening match, I enjoyed it more than yesterday's uh, night one's opening match, um, and then what was weird, he had like a baby face type, like, you know what I'm saying, celebration, his son came out there with the rest of, rest of his teammates, and I was just like, so is he a heel or is he a face? Because what he did was pretty heel. His teammates came out there. That was really heel-like. But then he brought his son out there to raise up the championship with him. And it's like, that's a face-type celebration. I'm confused. Comment down below. Let me know. Is he supposed to be a heel? Is he supposed to be a face? I don't really know. But either way, it was an enjoyable match. So I, I was definitely looking forward to what the rest of the night had in store. <clears throat> All right. Sachi Blackheart. And Ember Moon versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Um, at this point, um, I'm I kind of had a feeling. I kind of knew who was gonna win this match. In my head, I had a feeling Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon they were gonna win this match only because they just had they just got the titles. Like I want to say last month, so it wouldn't have made sense for them to just drop the titles like that. But um. That's kind of what was going on in my head, but I was hoping, you know, that I was going to be entertained, and I was entertained during this uh, tag team, uh, this women's NXT tag team match. It wasn't that bad. It was it was enjoyable. It was much better than what you get on Monday night and uh, on Friday nights when it comes to women wrestling outside of the few wrestlers that WWE wants to push, but that's neither here nor there. So, as soon as the, they announce who they are, the bell rings, and... um. Uh, Candice LeRae and uh, Indy, uh, they start attacking um, attacking Ember Moon and Shotzi. They start attacking them from behind. And at this point, majority of the match was them keeping Shotzi from reaching Ember Moon's corner. That's all it was. Pretty much that's what it was. It was slow, methodical, old school tag team wrestling. Cut off half the ring. Make it hard for the babyface to reach their partner. Ultimately, ultimately the babyface will reach their partner but you know they gotta crawl and drag themselves so um once uh ember moon is finally tagged in she hits off a flurry of attacks i like ember moon glad she went to nxt again she deserves to get used properly um and they're using her properly again you know what i'm saying and uh she hits a flurries of high offense attacks and she starts little starts doing a little wave starts dancing and hits the suck it chop to candace before hitting her i thought that was pretty cool pretty cute or whatnot then of course um 
There's a nice little tower suplex in the corner. It's like one in the corner. There's a nice little tower suplex. Everybody falls down. Cool little spot. Uh, you get the NXT chance. Uh, Shasi drives through Ember's Ember Moon's legs while she's like holding up the ropes to do a little suicide dive to uh, Candice LeRae and Indy uh, outside outside the ring. And when I say it don't look like they really caught her. It looked like Shotzi really ate most of that fall. It looked kind of brutal. Then, of course, Ember Moon, the high flyer she is, she just flips off the top rope to both of them down below. Nice little spot. Then, towards the end of the match, Moon hits a double eclipse on both of them, which I, I love her finishing move, the eclipse. Basically, a top rope stunner, but hits a double eclipse on both of them. Then Shotzi hit, goes to the other top rope um, and hits a top rope senton to India Hart. Indy Hart. And there it is. The match is over, and they retain the championships like I thought was going to happen. It was cool. Enjoyable. Like I said, better than what you're going to get on Monday nights and Friday nights from the women's division. But uh, it was cool. It was um, Definitely enjoyed it. Of course, me personally, last night's women's NFC Championship match. That was that definitely was a fantastic match. But this one was cool. Um, all right. Bronson Reed versus Johnny Gargano. And for the NXT North American Championship, you got uh, Austin Theory walking out there with Johnny Gargano. Um, I'm surprised about this outcome. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought this outcome was going to be very different. But we're going to get to that. So, Johnny has this. You know, every takeover, he has some type of unique, like, costume. Johnny has, like, this Iron Man costume on. You know what I'm saying? But instead of the traditional colors, you guys remember from Iron Man 1. Uh, I forgot who the, the villain was. But he had, like, this his own mechanized Iron Man suit. But it was all, like, steel color. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's kind of the vibes I was getting from that. So, I thought that was pretty cool. Um... At this point, let's see. Um, I will say this. Bronson is very agile. For someone that big, he's doing cartwheels and he's moving around pretty fast. He's very agile for someone that big. Um, Johnny, let's see. Johnny was trying to find a way to take down Bronson. Like he was doing everything, running the ropes. He could not could not like get him down to his knees. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Johnny pushes Bronson into the corner. Of the announce table, that was kind of his opening, and that's what they focused on. Johnny focused on his ribs because he pushed them into the corner of the announce table and right into his rib area. So that's the story they were trying to build. Okay, Bronson is going to have a hard time doing these high effective moves now because he's holding his ribs. And if you ever had a rib injury, you damn near can't even do anything, let alone wrestle. So that was the way they were going to going to make it somewhat believable that Johnny had a chance because weight wise at toward like there was a few points in the match where Johnny was just getting thrown around because he's not as big as Bronson. So that's how they were going to kind of get Bronson down to Johnny's level uh, story wise, uh, storyline wise. Uh, let's see. Uh, Johnny works on his ribs the, the majority of the match. Bronson hits Johnny with some some very high impact moves, but every time he does, He's clutching his ribs, clutching his side. Um, now, this was a very nice move. There was like, uh, I want to say Bronson is tied up on the top rope. And Johnny hits a backstabber to Bronson in the corner. And what made it so vicious is like, he didn't really get most of his back. He got like his neck in head area so his neck kind of whiplash from it i thought that was pretty pretty brutal just in the replay alone um i like the fact that johnny is holding his own against bronson i put that in my notes because i do i, I like the fact that they made it believable in the sense that johnny's able to wrestle him focus on the injury and chop him down that way i thought that was that was cool to make johnny look good as a uh, as a champion um I want, let's see, where am I at now? Um, I like, okay, so obviously Austin Theory was going to get involved. That's what he was out there. Austin tries to get involved into the match, which causes a distraction. And uh, then Austin puts uh, Johnny's foot on the ropes to save him from from a pin, you know what I'm saying, which is also creating another distraction. Bronson's trying to go after Johnny. They end up trying to tag team Bronson, but he gets the better of them. And then... 
right here, this is when Bronson goes a little bit high risk, high reward, but he didn't get the reward. He goes for it. Goes for like a a just a uh I guess you could say like a some a form of a moonsault, but basically a backflip off the top rope. Someone his size doing a backflip off the top rope, and prior to this he had been trying to go for his tsunami splash, but he kept getting you know kept getting hung up or distracted or he wasn't able to hit it. So it's like okay, so he tries to go for a backflip off the top rope. Johnny scouts it, he misses, and then uh, ultimately. Uh, Johnny ends up winning the matches with a couple of like, I don't know the name of the move, but he basically goes outside of the ring and then comes back in. It's like a it's like a like a, a motion of a DDT of some sort through the ropes or whatnot. Comment down below, comment down below. Let me know the name of the move. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Johnny loves to hit this particular move. He hits it on him twice and Bronson loses and Johnny retains the title, which I was surprised on. I thought they were going to give the, t the title to uh to Bronson here, but no, they, they're letting uh, Johnny hold on to the NXT North American Championship, so we'll see who will actually be the one to take it, maybe it will be Loomis, maybe Loomis will be the person to take the championship from, I'm not sure, we will find out in uh, the upcoming weeks, alright, one of the best matches of the night, it's hard for me to choose well, no, it's not hard for me to choose, uh, I, I, I definitely enjoyed the unsanctioned match uh, a little bit more, but this was, if that unsanctioned match didn't exist, this was going to be the best match of NXT weekend, bro. No doubt about it. Well, for the, you know, the two nights of the NXT show, NXT TakeOver show. Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross for the NXT title. Promo package. Amazing. I like in the promo package, they compare Finn Balor winning the WWE Universal Championship and dropping it to a shoulder arm injury. And he had to drop the title the next day. The same way with Kieran Cross winning the NXT Championship. And have, and he had to drop the title because of a shoulder arm injury. I like the comparisons there. I like the fact that they built up in this promo that Finn Balor always knew. And Kieran Cross comes back. You know what I'm saying? That little sick little promo. Little moment where people's made a meme out of it. And Finn Balor doesn't even turn around. He just looks behind him like to the side. He's like... I was wondering when you was going to show up. Like, that was cool. That was a cool moment, bro. So, I love this promo package. was fantastic, man. Um, Finn Balor made the best move uh, move of his career coming back to NXT. I put that in my notes because I had to let it be known. Him coming to NXT revitalized his career. You can't argue with me on this one. Like, he was floundering on the main roster, and I'm glad he came back to NXT, and he's getting the love that he deserves. He's never looked any better. Um, so let's see. Cross is, I didn't know this, Cross was undefeated in singles competition, and Finn Balor was 14-1 and in takeovers, and he never lost a takeover championship match until tonight. The championship title match, he never lost one. Until tonight, but he was 14 and 1 in takeovers. Now he's 14 and 2 in takeover. Um, I like how they were sizing each other up at the beginning of the match. Like, I want to say Karrion Cross is like, you know what I'm saying, showing his strength. And you know, he's he's hitting he's hitting Finn Balor with some moves. And every time he does, Finn just gets up and he starts laughing. You know what I'm saying? I put this in my notes as well. And like Finn is laughing, trying to get under Karrion Cross's skin. And that was the motive. That was the game plan. He was just waiting for him to let his emotions get the best of him so he can slip up. And that's when Finn Balor was going to capitalize. And I put that also in my notes. Finn's trying to get under uh, Karrion Cross's skin. But there was one slap. He slapped, uh, he slapped the hell out of Karrion Cross the first time. It was one slap. Slapped him. Karrion Cross knocked him back down. Finn Balor started laughing. Gets up in his face. Slaps the dog piss out of him again. And that's when Karrion Cross explodes, man. Like, he starts attacking him he starts doing you know the uh the speed of ramming someone into the to the turnbuckles or whatnot he's running the ropes all this other stuff and his emotion gets the best of him he tries to ram in you know ram his shoulder into uh Finn Balor's uh chest air uh, mid area region again 
Finn Balor moves out the way and he ends up hitting the ring post. And that's when Finn Balor starts to capitalize on working on uh, Karrion Cross's arm off that mistake. Uh, uh, Finn gets Cross in a modified arm bar. Um, and at this point, he's literally just, you know, focusing on that arm. And I, I put in my notes as well that Finn is showing why he is the NXT champion at that point because he's methodical. He's thinking like he's just he's not going off emotions. He's going off of what he sees and where he needs to pick his spots. Um, I also put in my notes that this match was very enjoyable. I was enjoying the storyline behind it. I was enjoying how... Karrion Cross is still fighting through everything, showing his primal strength, and Finn is just thinking methodically, trying to figure out how he's going to take him down. Um, Cross then had a flurry of high impact moves on Finn. Cross keeps having an answer for Finn's like offense. Anytime Finn gets some type of edge, Cross has an answer for it, or he powers out of it. That was the the you know kind of the story of the match that was being built up. Um, then Finn, here's where things get even more, you know, in, intense and exciting. Finn hits the coup de gras. He, he goes up, hits the coup de gras, hits it beautifully too, executed it, everything. He goes for the cover. Karen Cross kicks out a two, but not only did he kick out a two, he kicked out a two and then is putting a sleeper hold, uh, applying a submission hold to Finn Balor. It happened so quick. I'm literally writing down. He kicked out a two and I looked up and he has Finn like in this choke hold. I'm like, did that not phase him? Like, he, what was that? I'm loving the way they're building him. I'm just like, what the hell is that? What type of monster is he? So he kicks out. Puts Finn into a solution, submission. And then at this point, Finn's trying to do everything he can to, like, stay alive within the match. Um, he even has, like, the submission hold on Karrion Cross, And then Karrion Cross fights through it because he's trying to get to the ropes. But Karrion Cross fights through it. And it's like he just, he hulked up. Like, he, he just, I don't know, powered up. You know what I'm saying? And... All of a sudden, he starts pummeling Finn Balor. Finn Balor's laying face down. He's just pummeling him over, over, and over in the back of the neck and head region. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this this may be over. I think Finn's about to lose this. Obviously, I thought Finn was going to lose it. But just the way this inning segment went down, I was like, yeah, it's not looking good for Finn. At this point, Finn's on wobbly, wobbly legs. You know what I'm saying? He's, you know, kind of just, you know, he got the... Uh, Mortal Kombat days look going on, and Karrion Cross lines up, winds up in one of the corner, hits him with a nasty like elbow shot to the back of the neck and head region, and one, two, three, and Karrion Cross is once again your NXT champion, man. I I'm not gonna lie to you, it was an enjoyable match. I enjoyed this. Uh, I'm actually happy that Karrion Cross regained his title that he never lost. I think this with Finn Balor holding it was great. It was perfect. But we all knew at some point Karrion Cross was going to come back and regain his championship. The fact that the way this match ended in such a brutal and intense fashion lets you know how they really feel about Karrion Cross, because it wasn't a squash match by any means, you know, Karrion Cross really had to fight, but he essentially destroyed him at the end, and um, Finn Balor has been on the top of his game, me personally, I don't know who you have to beat Karrion Cross for the title, I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody on the NXT main roster right now that you would have beat Karrion Cross. For that title. I think he's going to hold that title. For a very 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 long time. He's going to have a long title reign. Unless you build up somebody. You have to build up a mega baby face. And they have to have some impressive wins. But right now. I don't see anybody taking that championship from him. Unless he relinquishes it. Or some shit. That's the only way. But other than that man. 
Cannon Cross won. I agree with this decision. I like this decision a lot, and I'm looking forward to what type of havoc and, and carnage he's going to cause to anyone trying to come for his championship. So, the last match, the unsanctioned match, the match we've all been waiting for. I know I haven't talked about it on my channel, but best believe I have been watching the segments, and I, there's nothing better than I love than a blood feud I love me some blood feuds when it comes to wrestling, like the Triple H and Shawn Michaels blood feud. Or better yet, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa blood feud. The last time we saw an unsanctioned match was in NXT was from Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. That feud, that match was amazing. It was spectacular. I love that match. Love it to death. One of my favorite matches of all time. And we got another unsanctioned match between Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole. When I say this promo package was fantastic, enjoyed every second of it. I literally hadn't felt this excited for a match since Johnny Gargano and uh, Tommaso Ciampa. Their unsanctioned match. That's the last time I felt this excited. Like, no lie, man. Uh... Uh, these blood feud matches, they just they they come packed with great storytelling. Like it's like you really want to see the babyface overcome the the person that they thought was their friend. Like I just love these type of matches, great storytelling, and I was looking forward to this as soon as they came out to the ring. Kyle O'Reilly uh, definitely came into his own here. Um, the reason why I put that in my notes is because. If you guys have noticed, he literally, at War Games, he was one of the best things in War Games. He was one of the reasons why they won in War Games. Um, his matches with Finn Balor were fantastic. Like, he literally came into his own. You know, he became an up-and-coming rising star without the Undisputed Era, and I, I like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I was definitely, I'm definitely buying into more into Kyle O'Reilly as a main event player for NXT. Um, they start throwing hands. I mean, soon as they the bell ring and it, all the security get out, they just start throwing hands. Like, let's get it on. Um, Kyle is very vicious with the the kicks to Adam Cole while he's sitting on the on a chair on the outside ring those kicks were brutal adam cole using a chair with the undisputed era logo painted on it i thought that was kind of a a little funny funny uh little tidbit there like okay someone spray painted the undisputed era logo so boys can start beating people over with uh with their logo on it or their old logo on it um let's see so what's next vicious neck breaker to the steel chair by adam cole Bruh. And this was the story that they were building. Kyle O'Reilly is not really medically clear to face Adam Cole because of what Adam Cole had did to Kyle O'Reilly a few weeks back by basically flipping him onto some steel steps, injuring his neck. So that's why this match is unsanctioned because he's not medically clear. So that was the focus, just focusing on Kyle O'Reilly's neck the entire match. That's all it was, just to pretty much essentially... Handicapped this man and end his career. Um, let's see. Adam is, you know, I said Adam was really focusing on the neck of Kyle O'Reilly. The crowd starts chanting, wanting tables. The crowd was amazing. It felt good to hear the crowd chant random stuff. It was cool. I was loving it. Um, Kyle punches the chair that ends up hitting Adam in the face. Adam was gonna use the chair. Kyle says, screw my hand, punches the chair straight into uh, uh, Adam Cole's face, and you can see a visible dent in the chair. Then there's a uh, hangman neck break from the second rope to Kyle on some chains. Very brutal spot. Very, very brutal spot. Then a backstabber while Kyle is wrapped up in a, in a chain. So the previous segment he ends up getting like clotheslined by the chain by Kyle O'Reilly as he's running the ropes. Then Adam Cole wraps him around with the same chain, hits a backstabber on it, a backstabber on him. Very brutal. Um, then <laughs> the the crowd starts chanting, "He chose violence." After Cole sets up two chairs in the ring, Cole 
is going for the infamous spot where he sets up two chairs and the back of him is like the, you know, the pointed end. And he's basically about to, you know, pretty much end somebody's career on the edge of those two chairs. So you hear the crowd chanting, he's chose death, he's chose death. And I thought that was funny because he was trying to kill Kyle O'Reilly. Definitely, it seemed like it at points. Um, let's see. Kyle had a chance to end Cole on the steel steps and he should have did it. I put it this in my notes because it made me mad. He had the chance to do the same spot that Adam Cole did to him by flipping him over on the steel steps on the neck and head region. He didn't do it. He was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. Bro, that made me mad. It made me mad. But he redeemed himself. It's like, don't don't fight the rogueness. Let the rogueness take over you. Especially in matches like this, you have to go rogue. You can't be a good guy. These are matches not meant for good guys. You can't be a baby face in this match. People want to cheer for you. You got to be a heel. You got to be evil. <laughs> so that kind of annoyed me from a storyline standpoint. I would have did it. I would have hit Adam Cole with that. I would have hit him with it twice. They would have been like, stop the match, Ross. What are you doing? He has a family. Fuck his family. <laughs> That's exactly what I would have did. Straight like that. All right. So um, let's see. Right after that. They get onto the announce table, and that's when Adam Cole ends up getting suplexed onto the announce table. Very brutal sounding impact. He hits the table, falls to the floor. Very brutal chant. The crowd's chanting NXT. They're, they're, they're enjoying it. Then um, Adam Cole is making his way outside to the little ringside area. Kyle is following him. And then Kyle get, proceeds to get hit in the face with a TV monitor. And I'm putting my notes. I wonder if it was a 4K TV. I really want to know. So I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Did he get hit with a 4K monitor? Was it a, just a regular 1080p monitor? Like, I don't know. It looked kind of thick. So I don't know. It may have been just a regular 1080p. But, hey, man, I don't know. Maybe got hit with a 4K monitor. Who knows, man? All right. So, at this point, uh, uh, Kyle, he gets dragged back into the ring. Adam Cole proceeds to go under the ring. Once again, they're going under the ring to get various weapons. He gets out a toolbox. He's he's channeling his Bob the Builder. He gets out a red toolbox, pulls out some pliers. I'm like, all right, what are you about to do with some pliers? You know what I'm saying? Now we're getting real edgy here. Uh, and he proceeds to try to stab uh, Kyle O'Reilly with some pliers. Like he was literally trying to stab him. Like, like literally was trying to end this man's career. Um, ultimately, he was stopped. Uh, let's see. Then uh, he wraps Cole arm in a chain in the arm in a in an arm breaker. So he's able to stop him. And my notes are kind of disjointed at this point because I'm I'm really invested. So I'm trying to take notes, but actually still be invested in the match. So uh, he he's he wraps Adam Cole's arm with the chain, then proceeds to put him in an arm breaker. I thought that was a nice little visual, made it look a little bit even more intense. Um, and then there's like a I want to say there's like a a tire iron in the ring as well they were trying to use it on each other um but they couldn't each one of them like each of the competitors they couldn't really get a hold of it because one would knock it out of their hand or whatever but while he's in that submission hold um he's able to reposition himself and kyle o'reilly grabs not kyle uh adam cole grabs the tire iron tire tire iron and pretty much stabs kyle o'reilly in his ribs to release the hold um they both end up propping up chairs in the middle of the ring. They both sit on the chairs. Adam Cole's talking trash. And they just start exchanging blows while they're tired and gassed out on the chair. Um, then Adam Cole goes for a low blow, you know. And then Cole hits a super kick. And I thought the match was over there. That's when I really thought the match was over. It was a close two count. Very close two count. Thought the match was over after the low blow and the super kick. Um, very close to count. Um, then this is where things get real rogue. Cole puts Kyle's head in the chair. You know how they put, like, they'll put someone's head where their, you know, the seat is. So their neck is kind of 
like in between the chair and the chair seat where it collapses and the ref is pleading with him don't do it don't do it think about this cole don't do it please don't do it man he was channeling his inner jr and <laughs> cole punches the ref for pleading with him he's like shut up shut the hell up god damn it and let me do what i want to do to this man let me kill him god damn it so he punches the ref out or whatnot and then the crowd starts chanting you deserve it to the ref so the ref is knocked out getting chanted at you deserved to get punched in the face then uh adam cole hits the panama sunrise on kyle but he knocked out the ref so the match would have technically been over but he knocked out the ref like a goofball so they they're counting up to one two three four five he's knocked out he would have had the match one and the crowd, like I said, I love the crowd being back. The crowd starts chanting, this ref sucks as he's laid out on the mat, bro. This ref sucks, man. Then Kyle uh, gets uh, Cole in a guillotine choke. And Cole and Kyle fall through a fall through the steel rampway. So they make their say they make their way up the ramp side. And he gets a guillotine, guillotine choke on him. And they fall through the little walkway ramp area, the, the steel grate area. They fall through it. Nice little spot. So Adam Cole gets out of the little hole, the little area, and he kicks the side of the stage like he's some superhuman individual, kicks the side of the stage to get Kyle O'Reilly through the, from like the wreckage and the carnage. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Let's see. The ref is finally back up when they get back to the ring. Cole hits hit uh hits the same move that injured Kyle O'Reilly in the first place. And I thought the match was over. He hits him over, he hits him with it over the steel steps again. I'm like, alright, well the match is over. This 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 is over. I put it in my notes. This match is over, bruh. Just like that. And when he goes for the pin. When Cole goes for the pin, Kyle kicks out by just lifting his shoulder. He doesn't do this like they traditionally do. He just lifts his shoulder because that's all the energy he had. I'm like, yo, this at this point, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this, bro. I'm loving this match at this point. Um, Kyle gaining some life by putting Cole in a submission, and Cole uses a chain around his fist out of desperation to break break the the leg lock he had on him and then kyle hits the last shot on adam cole and i thought okay the match is over he hit the last shot on adam cole his own move and cole kicked out i put in my notes i'm marking out at this point holy shit at this point i'm like all right bro what the hell what is happening? This match is fantastic. He just kicked out of the last shot. And I, I, I what, what? What? Just amazing, amazing storytelling in this match, man. Um, Adam placed the chair upside down to kill Kyle. Put that in my notes. Like the chair is facing upside down. So the legs are exposed and it's like kind of like at an angle. So he. Pretty much places the chair upside down. He's going to kill him at this point. And he's talking trash on the top rope because he has him like on his second to top rope. He's basically just going to end his man's career on his chair. Kyle hits him, Adam Cole, with a low blow while he's talking trash. Then Adam Cole falls on the chair face down. Like he's laying on top of the chair while he's propped up face down. And I knew he was about to do something devious. Kyle wraps his leg around his knee like he wraps the chain around his leg and knee all the way up to his knee from the top rope and he jumps from the top rope kneeing adam cole in the back and neck area region but it was like in the back neck area region he knees him with the chain wrapped around his knee and the chair implodes while he's on top of the chair Adam Cole is convulsing as he should, selling it. He's convulsing, and Kyle O'Reilly goes for the pin. One, two, three. I was like, he shouldn't kick out of that. He literally got hit with, from the top rope with a chain wrapped around his knee to the back of his 
uh, neck and back region while he's laying on a steel chair face down. One, two, three. And like I said, when you see the replay, the height he got was impressive from the top rope. The match was over. Kyle O'Reilly wins. They had to get the, uh, the medical staff out there. And how poetic was it that Kyle was standing while Adam Cole had to be carted off on a stretcher. And I thought that was very poetic because a few weeks ago, Kyle O'Reilly was carted off onto a stretcher. And fantastic match. Loved this match. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Honestly, um, I think the future in here. I don't think they need to continue the feud. Me personally, I don't think they do. Uh, I don't know if they will. Maybe they will. Maybe they will continue the feud at some point. But I think they need to end the feud. Let Kyle O'Reilly do his own thing. Let Adam Cole do his own thing. Um, but in enjoyable match. Definitely one of the best ways to cap off NXT TakeOver. Uh, stand and deliver because they did stand and they did deliver on both nights but for me personally night two was my favorite night out of the both i enjoyed night two uh a little bit better for me personally but uh, i want y'all opinions on things comment down below let me know what was your favorite match of tonight mine's personally gonna have to be the unsanctioned match because it was just hands down intense and brutal and i love me some blood feud matches but i would love to get y'all opinions so let me know which which one of these matches was your favorite match and which night was your favorite night did you enjoy night one better than night two did you enjoy night two better than night one i want to want your comments and what your thoughts and opinions on that but uh looking forward to wrestlemania night one saturday night two sunday so best believe you're gonna have some thoughts and opinions videos coming so be on the lookout for that saturday night and sunday night it's gonna be nice can't wait to bring that content to you guys but i appreciate all the love and support road to 40k appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace